I'm not ready to let summer go quite yet. So I'm going to keep being in denial that we're already more than halfway through and hold on to it for dear life. And therefore, we're gonna be discussing some summer eyeshadow palettes today. In fact, we have 10 of them to talk about and I'm gonna to try to rank them for you guys. So if you're interested in hearing what my current top 10 summer palette favorites are, then please keep on watching. guys I have the red basket and we're gonna be talking about summer eyeshadow palettes today I filmed this video probably over a month ago maybe even a month and a half ago never got a chance to edit it June was nuts work-wise and just in in every single possible way it did not go according to plan and then it culminated with my 40th birthday on the very last day of the month which which I didn't handle too well like I'm still I'm still getting used to this whole 40 thing I'm getting better but for a little while it was rough going and some videos just didn't get edited and this was one of them i had a top five at the time and it has since expanded a bit so we're doing a top 10. i'm gonna go ahead and try to rank these for you but before we jump right into it i just wanted to welcome everybody to my channel whether you are new or returning those of you that are here for the first time welcome my name is natalia i'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty to the point where sometimes i go a bit overboard and in 2020 I started my channel with a no buy year. It was a bold move. It was fairly successful. If you're curious to see my no buy journey, I definitely can link some playlists down below. But basically this year was supposed to be all about transitioning from a no buy into more of a budget oriented low buy. I have to admit it has not been going as well as I hoped and I'm trying to get back to my roots to the reason for why I started this channel and that was to meet friends like-minded friends who love makeup but also to hold myself accountable. I figured that if there are eyes watching me it would give me an opportunity to really really stick to my guns and I've kind of let that go unfortunately in the past few months but I I'm getting back there. Really, I am trying my best to kind of go almost on a no buy again because I have lost my magic touch. I have lost my uh, way of reasoning myself out of purchases and instead I am back into a place where somehow I managed to reason myself into them. So if you are interested in content that is going to have a little bit of the new but quite heavy back into things like shop my stash ways to play with what i already have hopefully creative ways i want to create content that is fun and engaging but that does not mean i have to go and buy new things if that sounds good to you if you're here for it if you are also struggling with buying way too many things and just need somebody else to hold you to your guns then you're in the right place i hope that you will consider subscribing and joining our frugal family. Let's jump in to my top 10 summer eyeshadow palettes. We're gonna start with a cheat and this is going to basically prove the point I just made in my very lengthy and not eloquent intro because I really didn't know how to word what I'm trying to say. But I think this first palette that I'm gonna talk about is kind of going to give you an idea of why I really need to reel things in. The palette in the number 10th spot is the palette that I was most excited for since it was starting to be sneak peeked and it was actually my birthday gift to myself in June. I bought this palette as a gift to myself. I wanted to immediately do videos on it. I was so excited and because of I guess where I was mentally in June, I haven't even touched it. I keep wanting to but I think because I have hyped this palette up in my mind because it was just so special to me for many different reasons, I want to give it the proper entrance into my collection. I want to show it full appreciation and I just haven't felt like I have had the time to do that or like the proper mental state to do that. I'm sorry for the occasional noises. It's raining. The AC is right next to me. The AC is not running so I am hot and bothered but outside 
the raindrops are falling on my air conditioner. So that's why once in a while you hear those annoying pops. Getting back to the palette in the number 10 spot. It is only in the number 10 spot because I haven't used it yet. It is the one I am at this point most excited to use in my collection because I've accumulated way too many palettes this year. I was supposed to only get one a month and instead somehow I've ended up between people gifting me palettes and me buying them up on sale like they're candy. I've ended up with 32 new eyeshadow palettes so far this year. I counted them yesterday and had the shock of my life. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to justify. I mean, yes, some of them are like really small drugstore palettes. Some of them cost me only $3. That's not the point. The point is I have 32 and probably half of those I have yet to try. With this being one of them and this being the one I'm most excited for. So it is in this video for more than just its color story, which does scream summer to me. It's also in this video, again, to hold me accountable, to make sure I finally use this thing because it is gorgeous. I'm talking about the Nomad American Parks palette. When they were doing clues on Instagram, I don't know if you are familiar with Nomad, but they put out these photos and do clues into the theme of the palette and the shades. I was playing along and I was so excited and I have only in the past couple of years started going out and doing little hikes and being in nature more. I am a city girl. I was born in Moscow and then moved to New York City. I mean, two of the largest cities in the world. When I was younger, basically my motto was if I can't walk there in stilettos, I'm not going. And I wish I was kidding, <laughs> I'm not. So I've just recently gotten into hiking a bit and I have been to two of the places that this palette represents, which is of course all the American parks. And look at this gorgeous palette. Now that you guys are seeing it, I have to admit, aside from the fact that I was kind of in a bad place when this arrived, one of the other reasons I haven't used this is this is like a work of art. I can't bring myself to destroy these gorgeous imprints. So I need to photograph this so that I have a memory of just how incredibly stunning this palette is. And then I will do a video on this palette at some point. I haven't decided what kind of a video. Feel free to give me recommendations down below, whether you wanna see multiple looks, whether you wanted me to just do a chatty get ready with me. I could do some sort of a tag while we're getting ready with this. And this color story is all about summer. Between this sunshine in this corner and the trees and the water, and the earth, the sand. I mean, this could be like desert. It's just such a beautiful, such a beautiful palette. I love everything about it, from the theme, to the artwork, to the shades, to the gorgeous design. I don't love my neighbors stomping upstairs. I never love that. If you have this palette and you're not using it this summer, please do, for both of us, please do. In the ninth spot, I have a Wet n Wild palette, one of my recent purchases. By recent, I mean, I guess in the past three months because I know I haven't really been updating you guys on what I've bought for myriads of reasons. Shame and guilt, I'm sure, being, you know, two of them. But I bought a whole bunch of Wet n Wild's new five and 10 pan palettes when they were having some sort of a huge sale. I think it was like a 50% off sale on their website. So these palettes as it is, I think are $5 and their five pans are like three. And I bought these half off. So as I said, there was reasons for why I went crazy, but it's still, still not an excuse. But out of all the palettes that I bought, I thought this is definitely the most summary of them all. You'll see this type of color story throughout this video quite a lot. This is a number nine spot because I've only used it once so far. And while I do really like the look that I created, it was a bit tough to work with. It took time, it took patience. There was a lot of fallout from pretty much all the shades. I'm glad I did my eyes first. And actually it is the look you guys are seeing on 
my face right now. So this is the palette I used today. I really wanted to put it in this video, but I wanted to already have at least some sort of a first impression thoughts on it. I can't say I loved the experience of using it. However, the reason for why I still kept it in this top 10 is because the end result came out real nice. And if you don't want to spend a high price tag and you don't have a prominently warm toned gold bronze palette in your collection, if you don't have any of the Natasha Denona warm palettes like her gold and her sunset and her metropolis and her bronze palette or whatever other ones like the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette or anything with this sort of color story that you've been eyeing and you just want something that will get the job done. You're maybe not sure if something this warm would look good on you or you're just on a budget. This is actually in that case really really nice. Just give yourself a few extra minutes when you're working with it as long as you can do that then I would say this is definitely a very nice palette. I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I used nine out of these 10 shades today. I do have a habit of doing that when I use a palette for the first time, trying to use as much as I can. The only shade I didn't use today is the copper right here. Everything else somehow made it onto my eyes. Yeah, I like the look. As I said, it was just a little bit cumbersome to use because of the fallout, but thankfully because I did my eyes first, I easily could clean it up and move on with my life. Now we're gonna have three different Juvia's Place palettes in this video because I happen to have a lot of Juvia's Place and I think they used to especially have such fun color stories and quite a few of them definitely scream summer to me. In number eighth place is the Warrior 3 by Juvia's Place. And the reason for why this is ranking a little bit lower is just because of the color story. While I think it has really fantastic bright rainbow colors for the summer, it's not something I'm gonna reach for every single day. It's something I might reach for a specific shade or if I'm really having a day where I want to play with color. But for the most part, I definitely think, of course, these blues are really gorgeous for the summer. They really remind me of water and you'll see there's a few palettes that have pops of blues. I really love like these reds and yellows. I think that that really is reminiscent of just sunshine. I think it's fun to have a bright, colorful eyeshadow palette out and about in the summer and I do hope to use some of these. I don't know if I'll get a chance to use all 10 of these a lot in just one month because I don't wear makeup every single day. I'm going to keep these out after this video and see how many of them I can use. Okay. In number seventh spot is my very first large Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette. I bought this for myself secondhand right before my no buy year. So I bought this at the very very tail end of 2019. It wasn't my favorite palette from Natasha Denona. It wasn't one that I was lusting after. There were definitely others that I wanted so much more, but I found it at a pretty good price. I don't know, I guess I just had always wanted Natasha Denona for the longest time, so I caved and bought it. The palette that I'm talking about in my number seven spot is the Sunset Palette. It's a beautiful, very warm tone palette, so therefore it is perfect in my opinion for the summer again you're gonna see the yellows and the reds and all the golds. It is a beautiful palette, but lately I just don't find myself reaching for it. And it is currently in my basket of doom for that reason. I just don't know if it's really going to get the love that it deserves sitting around in my apartment. I have another Natasha Denona palette that you guys will see in a little bit. And I, I just don't know. That one might completely replace this and therefore I might decide to either again resell it or pass it along to somebody that will love it more. But I would like to give it some more love before I make that decision and it is in the number seven spot. So it did beat out a couple of other eyeshadow palettes because I have already played with it. I already am familiar with the colors and the formula and overall I really do enjoy the palette. Just it gets neglected. Similarly, we have the Juvia's Place Warrior palette. I love the aesthetic of this palette. I love the color story of 
this palette but because i don't wear warm tones on the daily basis because i do like to switch things up it also gets a bit neglected but i love the formula of this palette there are three mattes in here and they're perfect because you have a light you have a mid-tone brown and then you have a rich deep brown it's not as pigmented as it looks in the pan but it is buildable and then you have such a gorgeous array of shimmers now as i mentioned if you need something even more affordable oh, let's see if i can open the wet and wild these do in some ways definitely have similar color stories i prefer so far for sure the juvia's place but i can't remember how much this is but it is probably at least double or triple maybe it's like 18 20 something like that whereas as i said the wet and wild is five and you can probably get it for like three dollars this is in number six place because i do love it i do use it once in a while i just don't feel like i use it enough but that seems to be the overall theme of my makeup collection hence the current decluttering mindset if you guys have been on my channel you know the decluttering videos are starting up and there will be more because i really really want to narrow things down to the products that i love and that i use more often all right moving on palette number five is my abh riviera palette a lot of people don't like this palette i happen to not be one of those people i really like this palette i think she is beautiful. Look at this insane color story. It has the gorgeous neutrals that you need. It's got, again, the yellowy gold. It's got a bronze. It's like a neutral bronze. It has these beautiful transition colors. You have your brown to deepen things up. And then you have this right here, these gorgeous colors, Seychelles, this teal color that reminds me of water. You have this hot pink called Bahamas. I mean, how much more summer can we get over here? Then you have Khan, which is that purple. And then this shifty gray is called Seaside. Yacht, Sails, uh, Cabana. I mean, even the names scream warm weather and summer. So definitely from the packaging to the color story to the names, I really think this is such a perfect summer palette. And I have created some really fun looks with this palette and I really wanna bust this out and use it some more. I'd love to hear if you have it and what you think of it because I feel like the people that didn't like this palette already long ago got rid of it. I got this much later um, at TJ Maxx, I think, or Marshalls. So I didn't buy it when it was first released, but I'm so glad I have it. Okay, number four is another Juvia's Place palette, and this is the Saharan 2. This has a bit of a darker color story, but some of these shades are just so, so summery to me. I love this shade that I cannot pronounce. It's like Sh Chef chef chowin but this color this color is so stunning and then of course this berber shade again that water those blues this marrakesh color i think is so gorgeous it's like peach with a golden shift and then you've got these beautiful deeper shades if you want something more dramatic i know i haven't really been swatching but i feel like i really have to show you guys that gorgeous shade I don't know if you guys can see the shift on this. This is this shade right there. I mean, it is just so pretty, so, so pretty. They're all stunning, but do you want to swatch here because as it is, I know I'm long-winded. I know we're gonna be here for a few more minutes and we gotta move. Up next in number three spot is appropriately so the Summer in Saint Tropez palette by BH Cosmetics. I just recently picked this up at TJ Maxx, was it? Yes, TJ Maxx for $6.99. I know that they have repackaged a lot of their palettes. They've gotten rid of the mirrors. They changed the uh, cardboard um, because they're trying to have fully recyclable packaging. In the meanwhile, I was definitely happy to snag this because I don't believe the color stories are changing, so I'm still getting the same, just slightly older palette. Now, I've only used this a few times. Some of these shades I have not used at all, but I have to be honest, from what I've used so far, I'm really loving this palette. And again, do, do we see the similarities? We've got these bright, sunny shades. We have Pampalone, which is that gorgeous blue. This is a matte in this case, so I could pair it with some of the other blues I showed you in the other palettes. I love this quad right here, these 
shimmery shifty shades exotic coastline beach club and super yacht this whole palette is beautiful i am so excited to play with it some more some of my most recent videos had a look from this palette i think it was my yes style haul as well as my most recent project pan update my 40 before 40 so that was this palette right here i'm really really enjoying it so hence even though it's pretty new to my collection and i've only used it a handful of times it is stealing the spotlight right now and it is at the number three spot all right we've got just the top to left Last year, this palette would have been number one. I don't believe I did a summer palettes last year. I don't remember, to be honest. But yeah, this has been my go-to summer palette, also in my daily life for as long as I've had it, which has been probably, I don't know, about four years. Got this palette in a boxy charm a while ago, and I'm talking about the Alamar Cosmetics Reina del Caribe palette. They have also repackaged this, I'm assuming, with a more eco-friendly packaging, maybe something for recyclable. I still have the old packaging. It still performs beautifully. Absolutely love this color story. It's only eight shades. It's concise. It's precise. It's simple. You can instantly see what you're trying to do here. You could just do a two shadow look. You could do an all matte look, deepen it up. These shimmers. Here, let's do my favorite. Alma Lacan. This color. I feel like I've included this in some sort of a top favorites before, but, and I feel like I always swatch this shade. I just can't help it because, I mean, it's, that's all I got. I don't think I need to say anything. I think it speaks for itself. This is my number two. Right. And now finally, drum roll please what is going to be my number one summer palette in my collection and that i am loving right now if you've watched my videos in the past month or so i think you can probably guess i would love it if you could guess down below before you see what i'm about to say it is very special palette it is a very expensive palette and um it was a birthday gift from a couple of friends of mine here in the beauty space rupee minhas and stephen ford gifted me the natasha denona Metropolis palette. A palette I have wanted for almost two years. A palette that I talked about nonstop. And she's been my number one love. Have I used every shade? No, because there's a lot here. There are 28 shades, I believe. I have definitely used this the most out of every eyeshadow palette I own in the months of June and July. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know what to say about this palette. I feel like a lot of people have it who collect makeup or who love Natasha Denona definitely have this one. She's very expensive. So can I recommend her if you have the means? Yes. If you don't, I would say maybe try the dupe. She's definitely has stolen my heart and she's my current favorite. As far as color story, I feel like this palette can work for me pretty much all year round, unless I am, of course, in the mood for a cool tone look, then it's not gonna work. But I see summer with a lot of these shades, but I also know that this palette will transition beautifully into the fall. So this is kind of that palette that you can use all year round. The browns and the gold are fantastic. That's mostly what I've been gravitating towards lately. As of this summer, as of right now, this was definitely a no-brainer. This is my number one palette of the moment. Is it going to turn into my favorite palette in my collection? I'm not sure. I have a few others that are real standouts. They're, they're giving her a run for her money. And I guess we'll just have to see how it all plays out at the end of the year. I did not do the video that was going around ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes I have tried so far in 2021. Didn't get around to it. It's already August by the time you guys are seeing this. Probably I'm filming this on July 29th. So I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to save that video for the end of the year. And we're just going to rank every single eyeshadow palette that I have tried in the year of 2021. So yeah, something to look forward to as well as, of course, a ton of other things. I'm trying to step up my game. I'm trying to post more consistently. I'm sure it's going to be up and down because I am a music school owner. Fall scheduling and registration is 
in the works. So August is again going to get quite crazy, but I'm really trying my best to pre-film and then edit as I go and just do my best. I really want to get to a place where I can post twice a week regularly. So if you are interested in that, if you're interested in supporting my channel and you're curious to see this journey I'm on with my ups and downs about how do I limit my spending but still participate in this beauty community without feeling left out, then I hope that you will consider subscribing. That could be a video for the future where we just talk about FOMO and videos like this really help because I get to again see and revisit things I already have and realize how many gorgeous eyeshadows I have that just sit and not get used. I'm hoping to do more videos like this where I really get to see and touch and swatch my collection. And that's probably the biggest advice that anybody who is struggling with this will give you is if you have the urge to shop, go play with your makeup physically play with it. I know with the year of 2020, most of us resorted to exclusively online shopping, but there are proven studies that stores light things a certain way, create a certain atmosphere so that shoppers touch more, sniff more, look at more, because the moment we hold something in our hands, we sort of associated it with it being ours. So knowing that, reverse that psychology and go play with your makeup. Create an atmosphere where it's enjoyable. Light a candle, pour yourself a drink, put on some nice music or a YouTube video or whatever it is that you enjoy doing and just go play with your makeup. It's what I did today. I knew I was gonna film, but instead of planning, oh, maybe I should film the look, maybe I should do a get ready with me first and then film another video this way, I get two under my belt. Instead of trying to do that, which of course with my schedule, sometimes I do, I was like, no, I want to just turn on a YouTube video and just play with some new makeup. I, I'm sorry I went off on a totally different tangent. I feel like with the friends that I have made, it's been a topic a lot of us have been discussing lately and we keep trying to navigate this world of wanting the new and realizing that we're neglecting the old. So I'm sorry that <laughs> it's kind of off topic, but I just wanted to throw that in here at the end for those of you that are my diary hearts and stay all the way to the end. But other than that, I hope that you enjoyed my top 10 summer eyeshadow palettes. I really want to hear what are yours? What have you been using this summer? I know a ton of people have made videos about this, but if you're not on YouTube or you haven't had a chance to make a video on it, I would love to hear what you're loving for the summer and what are your top eyeshadow palettes of the moment. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys are all doing really, really well. I hope that as always, you're continuing to stay safe and healthy, that you're taking care of yourselves and those around you. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye guys. So if you're interested in hearing what I think are my top 10 summer themed or summer colors. So if you're interested in hearing what my current top 10, how am I going to word this? Why can't I get this out? What are they called? Like with the questions thing, the questionnaire thing, a tag. And then I also did, oh gosh, what was it? What was it? What the heck was the video that I did right before that?